Hi everyone, my name is Claire Curry. I'm a science librarian here at the University of Oklahoma. Today, in video 19 of Options for Remote STEM Research, we're going to discuss giving credit for using existing data sets by citation. In video 17, we talked about what a license is and showed you where to read about some of the commonly encountered licenses. We discussed attribution statements, another way of giving credit, in video 18. You may be wondering why not cite the data set. In fact, we encourage you to do that as well. One of the benefits to researchers of making their data open is that their work becomes citable and they get credit for it. Attribution is about the legalities. So the licensing statement, if you remember, has to do with the copyright. Citation is about scholarly provenance, where you got the information. You can read more in depth about the difference between citation and attribution at our research guide at this link. Look for the heading Understanding Licenses and then Citation versus Attribution. Citations are often what are counted for fellow researchers, though. Many of us need that citation for impact factors, reports for promotion and tenure. The norms around attribution and citation are still being developed for data and software relative to for papers, as you can see from reading the links in our research guide. Many sources, including data repositories, will provide suggested citations if you are unsure of the format, author, publisher, etc. So really, if you're not sure, go ahead and do both your fellow researchers would likely appreciate it. We've covered what data licenses are, how to use attribution statements, and now what citation is versus attribution. In summary, if it's got a license, you need to attribute it, but go ahead and cite it too for the researcher's sake. We'll wrap up this section on licensing and citing data sets with a live Twitter question and answer session on July 10th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time. It'll be on Twitter, so no registration is required to participate. However, you can read more about it on libraries.ou.edu slash events and look for the July 10th event. More videos in this series, as well as announcements about our live events and workshops, are available on Twitter, as well as on the Davis Listserv. You can view past videos in this series at bit.ly slash OUSTEMYT. Please contact me if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for joining us, and stay safe out there.